Hello everyone. In this video, I will be going over the problem positive max from the 2020 April Code Chef lunchtime contest. So the problem statement is that for a sequence of positive integers s, Chef defines f of s as the smallest positive integer that does not appear in s. So for example, if we had this array, then the smallest integer that does not appear is one. So then the answer here would be one. And then for the second example, here, the smallest integer that does not exist is 4. So then the answer, f of s, would be 4. And so what we want to do is that given a sequence, we want to find the sum of f of s over all 2 to the power of n possible subsequence is s of the sequence. So let's try to go through a few examples and see if we can find a pattern or something that can help us solve this problem. Okay, so let's say we have the sequence with the values 1, 2, and 3. And so the number of subsequences would be 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of elements. So it would be 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. And so I've written down all of these subsequences below. And so let's just go through and calculate the max values for each of these subsequences. So for this empty subsequence, the value would be 1, because 1 is the first positive integer that appears. For the subsequence with just 1 in it, the answer would be 2, because 2 is the first positive integer in the subsequence that does not appear. And for the subsequence with just 2 in it, the answer would be 1. And similarly, for the subsequence with just 3 in it, the answer would also be 1. For the subsequence with values 1 and 2, the first positive integer that does not appear is 3. For the subsequence with 2 and 3, it would be 1. And for the subsequence with 1 and 3, it would be 2. And then for this last subsequence with all the values 1, 2, and 3, the first positive number missing is 4. And so if we add up all these values, we get an answer of 15, which is ultimately what our program should output. However, the issue is that iterating through all 2 to the power of n possibilities would take way too much time. So we need to think of a way to simplify this. So first of all, let's consider, how do we know when the max is 1 in a subsequence? Well, if we look at all of our subsequences that have a max of 1, we can see that they all do not contain a 1. Okay, so let's move on to 2. How do we know if the max is 2? Again, we notice that all of the subsequences with a max of 2 do not have the number 2 but they all do have the number 1. So similarly, a subsequence with a max of 3 does not contain the value 3, but it does contain the numbers 1 and 2. So we can summarize that a subsequence with a max of n does not contain n, but it contains all the positive numbers less than n. So now based on this, let's see if there's a way for us to automatically calculate the number of subsequences with a certain max. Okay, so here we have the original sequence with the values 1, 2, and 3, and I also added the value of 1 to the sequence. And so now we want to find if there is a way to automatically calculate the number of subsequences with max 1. And so we know that the only restriction on a subsequence with max 1 is that it cannot contain the value 1. So let's look back at our original sequence. Here we notice that there are two 1s. And so we know that our subsequence with max 1 cannot contain either of those 1s. But the rest of the numbers, the 2 and the 3, can be included in the subsequence. So the answer becomes the number of subsequences we can form with the remaining values, 2 and 3. And so that would be 2 to the power of 2, which is equal to 4. Because there are two values that are not 1. Okay, so let's try calculating the number of subsequences with max 2 now. So this time we have two restrictions. We know that the subsequence cannot contain the value of 2, and we know that it must also contain the value of 1. So let's address this second restriction of it must containing the value of 1 first. So again, in our original array, we see that we have two 1s. 
And so we know that our subsequence can include either of those ones or both of the ones, but it cannot contain any of those ones. And so the number of ways to include at least one of those ones would be 2 to the power of 2. And the reason why is because we can essentially think of it as, let's say we had a sequence with the two ones. And so we want to find the number of subsequences in this sequence, which would be 2 to the power of 2. However, we have to subtract one. And the reason why is because one of the subsequences of this sequence can be an empty subsequence. However, if we do get an empty subsequence, then that means we're not taking any of the ones. But we need to take at least one of the ones, which is why we subtract one. And so this first part of 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 accounts for this second restriction we have, which is that the sequence must have a 1. So now let's look at this first restriction of how the sequence cannot contain 2. So let's look at the remaining values in our original sequence, which is 2 and 3. And so since we know that the sequence cannot contain 2, our only remaining option is 3. And so the number of subsequences you can form with just the value 3 is 2 to the power of 1, because there's only one remaining number. And so here the answer would be 3 times 2, which is 6. So there are 6 subsequences with max 2. Now let's try looking at when max is equal to 3. So again, this time we have two restrictions. The first restriction is that it cannot contain a 3, and then this time it has to contain a 1 and it has to contain a 2. So we already found out how we can calculate the part where it has to contain a 1. So let's just rewrite that. And so we know that this value of 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 guarantees that at least one 1 is included in our sequence. We also need to have a 2 in our subsequence. And so to do that, we notice that there is only one 2 in our original sequence. So the number of subsequences would be 2 to the power of 1. And then we also have to subtract 1 because we cannot have an empty subsequence. You can think of this calculation as being a calculation of the number of subsequences of just 1, 2. And so again, we need to get rid of the empty subarray. Okay, now the last part we need to address is that the subsequence of max 3 cannot contain the value 3. So at this point, we've accounted for the 1s and we've accounted for the 2s. And so our only value left is 3. But then again, we cannot include this 3. So we have 0 numbers remaining. And so we would have 2 to the power of 0. And so this would give us an answer of 3. So there are 3 subsequences with max equals 3. And so here we can notice that there is a pattern beginning to form. And that pattern is that for a max value of x, we would take 2 to the power of the number of 1s minus 1 times 2 to the power of the number of 2s minus 1, and so on up till 2 to the power of num of x minus 1s minus 1. And then the last thing we'd multiply this by is the number of remaining numbers. So like we already discussed, that would be 2 to the power of n, where n is the total number of numbers in the original sequence, minus the number of 1s plus the number of 2s all the way up to the number of x minus 1s. And so in order to code this, we can keep a running sum of this value, and we can keep a running product of this value. So let's go over the code now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-compute all the powers of 2. And the reason why is because if I pre-compute it now, then we'll save a lot more time later. And so I'm going to pre-compute 2 to the power of n's up to the maximum value of n is equal to 10 to the power of 5. And so I'm storing everything in this array called power. And so since 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, that's my first value. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is within this while loop, while t minus minus, I'm inputting n. And I'm going to create two variables to represent the input array, the sequence numbers. 
and also an unordered map because we want to keep track of the number of each number and so we can do that with a map. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to input everything in and again we're going to update the map. Okay, so then I'm going to create variables for the answer for the running product and the running sum. And so for each of the max values, we want to iterate from max is equal to 1 to max is less than or equal to n plus 1. And the reason why we're iterating up to n plus 1 inclusive is because if we do have an array with all the numbers from 1 to n, then the max value in that case would be n plus 1. And so n plus 1 is the maximum max value that we can get. Okay, so within this array, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the running sum and the running product. And so as we discussed before, the running sum is the sum of all the number of 1s plus the number of 2s and so on. So we would just keep on adding to sum count of max because count of max is the number of the current value of maxes that exist within the sequence. And so then I'm going to also do mod on this. So this would calculate the running sum. So I'm also going to write the code for calculating the running product. And as you can see over here, the running product is this part. So it's 2 to the power of num1s minus 1 and so on. So it would be product times power of count of max. And then we would do minus 1. And then we would mod it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the number of subsequences that correspond to each max value. And so in order to do that, we already have a formula over here. So we are taking basically the running product and we're multiplying that by 2 to the power of n minus the running sum. So I'm going to create a temporary uh, variable called new max to store this. So at the end of both of these statements, new max would equal this over here. So it would equal the number of subsequences that correspond to that max. However, the issue is that we want to find the sum of all of the maxes. We don't just want to find the number of subsequences we want to find the total sum. And so in order to account for that, we're going to be multiplying the product, the running product by max. So by the current max value we're on. And the reason why is because let's say we had three subsequences with a max of three. Then that would have a total sum of three times three is equal to nine because we would want to add all of the maxes across all of the subsequences. And so that's exactly what we're doing over here. So we're multiplying the current max value we're on by the running product. Okay, so then this gets the value we want, and so we can add it to the answer. And so then the last thing we want to do is we want to see out the answer. So 